In this video, we have to calculate the standard free energy change in standard state, so that little symbol means not, which is, represents a very specific set of conditions known as standard state, uh, which is 25 degrees C and one molar, or one atmosphere if we're dealing with a gas. So we need to calculate that for these uh, reactions. So the equation we're going to do is we will sum up the free energy change standard free energy of formation change, that's called delta GF, uh, of the products and subtract that from the reactants. So we sum the products of these delta free energy of formation of the products minus the sum of the free energy of formation of the reactants. So here, this is for one mole. Okay, so this is for one mole. If you have uh, two moles or three moles, you have to uh, multiply that value for each chemical by the corresponding number of moles. So as an example here in this specific problem, we have two moles of NO gas, so we have to multiply the value we get from the back of the book uh, by the number two. So I have a handout of all of the values um, here. So uh, one thing here, we're talking about delta G at standard state of formation. This also has enthalpy at standard state and entropy at standard state. Uh, it's 25 degrees. And we just have to uh, pick up the values and then um, plug them in into this equation. So um, going back to our equation here, we have N2. So it's products, some of the products minus some of the reactants. We have one product. We'll multiply that value by 2. We're going to look up our delta Gs and the delta G for NO gas. Uh, one thing is states matter. Okay, so you want the NO for gas. Um, a lot of these will be solids, liquids, or gases, so you want to make sure you have the right state. Here we're looking at a gas, and we're looking at a gas here, and we're going to take that number um, as 86.55 kilojoules per mole, that is our free energy of formation of delta G, standard state conditions. Remember, that not to mean standard state. And it's going to be two times this because um, uh, the value we got here is for one mole, and we got two moles according to our balanced chemical equation. All right, so that's our products. Um, and then minus, so I'm going to put a big bracket here, our reactants. So N2 is going to be zero because that's a uh, naturally abundant state. So the naturally abundant state gets, uh, by default, going to zero. That's N2 as a gas, not as a solid, not as a liquid. The most naturally abundant form. Uh, as baseline, the base compound gets zero or you can just look it up. So that's going to be zero for nitrogen. And um, the base compound for oxygen is also going to be zero because um, that is its most natural abundant state as O2 as well as the state of a gas. So um, you can look this up, but I already know it's going to be zero. Don't forget your units of kilojoules per mole. And our final answer here is going to be a positive 173.4 kilojoules per mole. So the positive tells us that this is an endorgonic reaction, a reaction that is not favorable to go in the forward directions. Right? Going from H2O liquid to H2O gas. All right, let's look up the values for H2O gas here from our sheet. You can also find these in the back of our textbook. And one mole of H2O gas is minus 228.57. So, so what we're right here, minus 228.57 kilojoules per mole. We want to uh, put our units at the end. Minus H2O liquid. So minus 237.13. So we have a minus, a minus 237.13 kilojoules per mole. Um, the minus and minus becomes a plus, so this is um, a very small amount of free energy, 0.86 kilojoules per mole. This is how much uh, in kilojoules per mole you would need for this reaction to go. In and of itself, by its own devices, the positive value of delta G. Under these conditions of standard state, the delta G for this reaction, by it being positive, we would expect this to be endergonic. We don't expect this to happen spontaneously. Finally, let's look at part C. Part C looks to be a combustion reaction. We got a lot of coefficients here, so we got to multiply each of these values we get from the table by uh, the corresponding stoichiometric coefficient. We want to remind ourselves of the formula here, some of the products minus some of the reactants. So let's start with our products first. Four times CO2 gas, so let's look that value up on our table. So for the delta G for CO2 gas, 
I'm getting um, minus 394.36. Got to multiply that by 4, remember now, because that's for one mole. We have four moles in our balanced chemical equa equation. I'm going to put the kilojoules per mole units at the end, plus 2 times H2O liquid. H2O liquid we found from our previous problem to be minus 237.2. Again, I'm going to put my units at the end minus uh, some of the reactants. Five times a zero, okay? Oxygen uh, is at default O2 and is a gas, so that's given a zero. Uh, this C2H2+, plus, uh, we're going to have to find that. This is a, an organic compound, so um, uh, this also in the back of your book, but uh, the table that I have here also has something for organic compounds. Looking at organic substances and C2 uh, H2 uh, is what we're looking for here. This is called acetylene. And um, we have here the delta G for acetylene C2H2 positive, positive 209.2. And we got to multiply that by 2. So, so be careful of math errors when you do this. Is minus 1577.44 plus a minus 237.2. This becomes plus into minus becomes minus. Two times that number. Let's do that quickly. Minus a 474.4 .4 minus five times zero, zero, minus a zero. Minus going into plus is minus. So this is going to be minus whatever two times 209.2 .2 is. So this is going to be a minus 418.4 .4, and um, all of this is kilojoules per mole. Okay, you want to put your units in at the end. So um, we are now ready to solve this problem. So a minus 1577.44 minus a 474.4 equals that minus a zero and that is minus a 418.4 and we're getting something around the order of minus 2,470 kilojoules per mole. And uh, this is a reaction that is good to go. By good to go meaning it, um, the negative sign tells us that this is exergonic. And um, as all combustion reactions do, they uh, proceed spontaneously towards the products.